using the new Candy Machine V3 to launch a Solana NFT collection. Hey everyone, this is Keystrokes. Welcome back to the channel. Today we'll take a look at Candy Machine V3, which is the latest release by Metaplex, and we'll launch a very simple Solana NFT collection using this. So let's see everything that we'll cover today. We'll start with a small introduction to what Candy Machine V3 is. We'll cover some basic concepts, which this new Candy Machine V3 introduces. Then we'll create an NFT collection using the Candy Machine V3. And then finally, we'll mint these NFTs that we created. As of today, Metaplex does not have an official Candy Machine UI that works for Candy Machine V3. So we'll be using a tweaked version of the existing Candy Machine UI, which I have managed to make it work for simple cases. Also, thank you so much for taking the poll and expressing your interest on the kind of videos that you'd like to see. Candy Machine was a clear winner. And so here we are with the video. I love to cover all kinds of computer science topics, so if there's something else that you'd like to see, please feel free to post it in comments. I'll be doing more polls like this, so responses like this really helps me. Also after this, I'll create some more data structures videos, cause that's the second category that got any more votes. Anyhow, let's get started with a new candy machine. So let's see everything that we've done with candy machines. We started with a launching very simple collection using Metaplex. Then we created a Windows version for it. Then we learned how to do whitelist and public mint using Candy Machine V2. And then we learned how to reveal using Candy Machine V2. And then it was all deprecated. And it was deprecated in favor to Sugar, which was really, really nice. And so we used Sugar to launch our Solana NFT collection. And please remember, when I say deprecated, it usually means obsolete in Candy Machine's case, because they still have support for the older versions. They just don't do any active development and recommend any future candy machines to be created using their newest tools. Well, now it turns out that Candy Machine V2 with Sugar is getting deprecated as well. But I think it's a really good thing. Everything evolves, especially software, hardware, and anything really. It has to keep growing. For example, if you take iPhones, we started with this, and now we have this. Now what if this evolution never took place? Similarly, Windows has evolved, we have new Linux operating systems, we have Macs, MacBooks, and just technology in general just keeps evolving. And following the same trend, our favorite candy machine is doing the same. And this basically means that they are actively improving the candy machine, they are taking the learnings from the previous iterations, and just making better software. And also, they are incorporating any feedback that they get from community or other developers. So overall, it's just getting more and more enhanced and new features are being added. And talking about new features, let's see what Candy Machine V3 has to offer. So as I said before, it's not really deprecated. The previous versions are just marked as obsolete. And now even Candy Machine V3 documentation says that it's an iteration. It has added a lot of new features and honestly, I'm very impressed by them. So we have always had payments in Sol or in any other Solana tokens. We knew that we can set minting start and end dates at all kinds of limits, have third party signers and whatnot. We could also restrict the mint to specific NFT or token holders. But now you can do payment in NFTs. You can define multiple minting groups which have their own rules. So it's much easier to define OGs, public mints and any special groups that we want. Then they have candy guards, which allow you to set all kinds of configurable rules. And then this one, which might be favorite to some and maybe barriers to others. We have bot taxes and gatekeepers. So if somebody tries to be sketchy and tries to mend before Candy Machine goes live or tries to do anything sketchy, they will be taxed. And I think this was one of the most wanted features, which was how to restrict the mint to a list of selected wallets. So I don't know about you, but these are a lot of new features so let's take a look at the life cycle of Candy Machine V3. This has been taken from the docs and I'll have the links to all the docs and the links I use in the description. So the first step is to create and configure a candy machine, which is pretty simple. You just create a candy machine and add some basic settings to it. Then once a candy machine is created, you have to add items to it. So that's step two. You basically start a collection of, let's say a thousand NFTs. And so you add those NFTs to your candy machine. And then we do the most exciting part, which is to start minting. As people mint through the candy machine, NFTs are generated and people own them. And after all of this is done, the candy machine can be deleted because now NFTs live on the blockchain and candy machine has no more use. The other aspect of candy machine that I wanted to talk about is candy guards. It's just an additional program which protects your candy machine. It helps you control minting. And as of making this video, 
there are 18 candy cards available. You can see how much Metaplex has invested into candy machines. And it might come as a surprise to you, you already know candy cards, just in a different form. So let's take a look at an example. Here we have a candy machine with some settings and items and some cards attached to it. And there are four cards here. One is soul payment, where it defines each NFT is one soul. Then it defines a start date. It talks about mint limit, which means each wallet can mint only one NFT. And then we have a bot tax of 0.01 soul. So we have already seen soul payment and start date with Candy Machine V2. But mint limit and bot taxes, these are new. And there are 18 such cards available. And let's take a look what happens if somebody tries to mint with these cards in place. So if wallet A tries to mint on January 5th, then it's too early and the candy machine is not live yet. So they get charged the bot tax. Then wallet B tries to mint on January 6th, which is a totally valid mint. So they get their NFTs. But wallet B wants more NFTs. So it tries to mint again, but we have a limit set to one. So because wallet B already minted one NFT, it cannot mint again. And so bot tax get charged to this wallet. Now wallet C, which has 0.5 soul, tries to mint, but it doesn't have enough funds. So it gets charged the bot tax again. So in total, there are 18 candy cards and I can cover all of them in future videos. And if you'd like it, then please let me know in comments. And before we continue, I just want to thank the audience for all of your support. It really excites me every time somebody subscribes or views my videos or posts a comment. I just feel like my hard work is paying off and I'm helping out the community. So please show me your support by liking and subscribing if you have been liking this video so far and if you like all the content that I make. And you can further show me support by buying me some coffee at the link on the screen and in the description. And please keep telling me what else you'd like to see. Post it in comments and I read every single comment and I try my best to respond to all of them. And also I'd like to thank other community members who engage in the comments and help others out. Okay, so let's continue and get hands on. So the first step you need to do is to have the Solana CLI tool installed. I'll post a link to the documentation on how to do that. We've also covered this in our past videos and I'll add a link to it as well. Okay, so here I have my browser and this is the documentation of Solana tool suite, which you can use to install it. They have instructions for Mac OS and Linux, and they have instructions for Windows as well. They are pretty straightforward. And if you have followed any of my previous Candy Machine videos, then you must already have it. If you face any issues installing the Solana tool suite, then please post it in the comments. Otherwise, once you are done with the setup, let's verify it. So here I have VS code and I've opened a folder called candy machine v3, which I've created locally. And I've created a file candy machine.sh where I'll record all the commands that I'll be running. And here I have the terminal with the current working directory as the candy machine v3, which is the same folder, which we see right here. So to verify the setup, first run this command Solana version, and this should be successful and give you a version. Then the second command you want to run is Solana keygen and then version. And this should again give you the version of your Solana keygen. Now my setup here might be slightly outdated, but everything has been working for me with this version. Next, we'll download Sugar for Candy Machine V3. It's still in alpha stage and it's not released as a public release, but let's see how we can set up the alpha Sugar for us. Okay, so now the next step is to download Sugar. I'll post this link in the description, but this is where Sugar has all the releases of its versions. And what we need is something that says CMV3, which we see right here. So this is Sugar version for Candy Machine V3, and right now it's in alpha state. So if you open this, you'll see a list of different variations of the Sugar version. I'm on Mac OS Intel, so I'll be downloading this. Okay, so here I have Sugar downloaded to my directory in Candy Machine V3 folder, and we'll run a few commands on it. And before I forget, everything I'm doing is on Mac OS, and similar instructions should follow for Linux as well. I don't have a Windows machine, so I haven't tested any of these on Windows, but if you face any issues, then please let me know in comments. I'll try to help you out, and I'm sure the community will help as well. I'll try to create a dedicated video for Windows, though I'll have to first get a Windows machine somehow. Okay, so continuing, the first thing I'll do is rename this, so we don't have to type out that long name here. So I'll rename this to Sugar cm3 and let's go back to our terminal and we'll run the command chmod755 and then sugar cm3 this just gives it permission to be an executable great now let's run the command sugar cm3 and then version oh, never mind i think i have to add this in the beginning 
perfect. And now it's macOS giving me a warning that they cannot verify their developer and they recommend to move this to trash. But I don't think I'm going to do that. So just hit cancel. And if you're on macOS, you can just go to security and privacy and you'll see this allow anyway here. So just click on it and let's try to run the command again. It's giving us a warning again, saying that they cannot verify the developer of this tool, but we'll just hit open because we trust Metaplex. And once we click on open, we see that the version is recognized. Okay, so now the next step is to set up the wallets and the network in our CLI. So we'll be using Phantom Wallet, then we'll be creating wallets using the CLI, and then we'll import these wallets into Phantom. And in the past, I've created a dedicated video on how to set up and fund Solana wallets. So please check it out if you have any confusions. Otherwise, feel free to post any questions in the comments. And then we'll set up our CLI to use DevNet and these wallets that we just created. Okay, so now the next step is to create our wallets. And before I forget, let me copy these commands into our command.sh file, just so that I can keep a record of everything that I'm running. So the first one was Solana version, second is Solana keygen version, and then we gave permission to Sugar to be an executable, and then we checked the version of Sugar by this command. Okay, so now we'll create two wallets called owner and creator. So to do that, we'll run the command Solana keygen new, and then we have to give a path here. And for the path, I'll recommend running the command pwd, which gives you your complete path and putting that in here. And then you can write owner.json and copy this and do the same for creator. And I'll just write pwd command here as well. We'd like to run that. Okay, so let's run the first command for owner. Never mind, we have to add out file here as that's our output. So fixing this command. Okay, let's try this again. Perfect. Now we'll skip the pass phrase and this is our new public key that gets generated. And here we can see owner.json got generated as well. So copying this and saving this on top here. So we made sure that we copied the public key and the phrase that we get. Let's do the same for the creator account and running the command. We skip the pass phrase and we get similar data and we can see the files got created in a file directory here as well. So pasting it right here and commenting this out. Okay, perfect. Next, we'll configure our Solana config to use the key pair and the devnet URL. So to do that, we'll run the command Solana config set, then key pair, and we'll copy the owner key pair, this whole path and paste it right here. And let's run this command. Great. Similarly, we'll do Solana config set and URL, and we'll use this Metaplex URL for devnet. We'll copy this and paste it in here. Now the final command that we'll run is Solana config get, which gives you the configuration that our CLI is using. And the things to look here is the RPC URL, which is set to DevNet for Metaplex, and the key pair is set to owner.json and candy machine v3 folder. Okay, that looks great. Now the next step is to fund our wallets that we just created. So we'll do Solana airdrop and we'll ask for two soul. And the first wallet is this owner wallet. So we'll copy this and paste it right here. And sometimes this happens where it says the rate limit is reached. So in those cases, I just ask for a lower airdrop amount. Well, and that didn't work either. So let's try using a different tool called Soul Faucet. So in here, we can copy our public key, paste it right here, and we'll ask for one soul on DevNet. This was successful. Let's do the same for our second wallet, which is the creator wallet. Most likely we won't need any funds in there, but it's just good to have some funds in there anyways. And I think for our owner wallet, we might need some more funds. Right now we just put one soul, but it's good to have two soul in there. So let's fund it for one more soul. Okay, this was successful as well. Now we have our wallets funded. The next step is to import these wallets into Phantom Wallet. And to do that, we'll open our owner.json file here, copy everything in here, and then go back to our Phantom Wallet right here. And let's open the wallet and we'll add a new wallet. So import private key and paste in whatever we copied and let's call this owner and let's hit import. Let's do the same for the creator wallet. So copying all of this, going back, opening the wallet, clicking on the owner and further in and adding a new wallet, importing private key, pasting whatever we had and calling the wallet as creator. Let's import this in. And now we have all of our wallets. For creator, we can see we have one soul and for owner, we have two soul. Okay, so now it's time to prepare our assets for our NFT collection. And we'll be using the sample collection which Candy Machine provides. I've put the link in the description. There's one caveat to this. In Candy Machine v3 docs, 
they provide a collection and that collection doesn't work as of today. It has a missing file and an image for the collection itself. So we'll be using the collection under Candy Machine CLI. Okay, so now the next step is to download the assets. And you can download the sample collection provided by Metaplex by going to this URL. That's what I'll do right now. Let's hit that URL and it's asking us to save this. We'll save it in Candy Machine V3 and we can see it's right here. So let's double click on it to extract it. On Windows and Linux, there might be different ways to extract it, but on Mac, you just double click on it. So please follow the right instructions for your operating system. So let's go to VS Code and let's take a look at it. So we have assets folder here, which has 10 NFT images, an image and a corresponding JSON file with a couple of configuration, which we have covered in my previous videos. Then we have collection JSON, which talks about the NFT collection as a whole and an image for the collection. Okay, so now we'll generate the config file for our candy machine and we'll be using sugar for it. Okay, so now the next step is to create our config file. And to do that, we'll run the command dot slash and then sugar cm3 and then create config. And let me copy this right here. Okay, let's run this command. And it's saying that it could find 10 file pairs in assets. If that's how many NFTs you want, then just say yes. And yes, that's what we want. Then it says it found symbol NB in the metadata file, which seems to be correct. And it's coming from this JSON and this collection JSON file. So we'll say yes to it as well. Next is the seller fee basis point. We'd like 5% back, so you can put 500 for it. Then do we want sequential mint? They recommend no, so that's what we'll do. This will just make minting in random order. Then how many creator wallets we have? We just have one. It needs the wallet address. So scrolling up and copying our creator wallet address and pasting it in here. And the share should be 100% for this creator because there's only one creator. Now we don't want any more settings. So let's just hit enter and continue. We'll use bundler for our upload. Let's hit enter again. Do we want our NFTs to remain mutable? They recommend to choose yes, which will follow. And our config file is generated. So let's see how it looks like. So here's the config file. You can see it has send NFTs, the symbol, the seller basis point, just everything that we answered in this walkthrough right here. Now that our basic config file is created, we'll be uploading assets using Sugar. Okay, so now the next step is to upload our assets. And to do that, we'll run the command Sugar CM3, and instead of create config, it will be upload this time. So let's run this command, and this will take a couple of minutes sometimes. This was actually pretty fast. Our assets are now uploaded and we can see it even created this cache.json file with all of our assets. The first asset is this minus one, which is our identification for the collection. And then we have all of our 10 images right here. Now we have Candy Machine config ready. We have our assets uploaded. So it's time to deploy our Candy Machine v3 using sugar. Okay, so to deploy our Candy Machine, we'll run the command sugar cm3 and then deploy. So let's copying this and pasting in a terminal. Okay, our candy machine is created, which is this right here, which is the candy machine ID. So making a note of it, and we'll also make a note of the collection mint ID in case we need it in the future. So our candy machine has been deployed, but it's always a good idea to verify everything to make sure everything is set up fine. Okay, so now the next step is to verify our candy machine. So copying this command and changing deploy to verify and running this command. We are looking for this message, verification successful, and it says we are good to go. So our candy machine is set and ready. And now let's add some candy guards to our candy machine. Let's limit our mint to one per wallet. We'll add a start date. We'll add a sole payment destination. That is where all the funds go. And then we'll add a bot tax so that we can safeguard our candy machine against bad actors. Now the next step is to add some candy guards. And to do that, we'll open our config.json and we can see guards is set to null here. So the first step is to make this an object by adding these braces in there. And then we'll add a default guard for, for all of the mints. And we'll make this an object as well. Then the first card we want to add is the mint limit where we want each wallet to mint only once. And we can do that by writing mint limit, then making this an object. And before I forget, these have to be in quotes. Okay. And then we have to give this mint limit an ID. So we'll just give an ID of one and we'll say the limit 
that is how many mints can a wallet do is set to one. Then the next card that we want to add is the sole payment. So we'll do sole payment and make this an object again. And it takes two things. One is value and the other is the destination. So for value, this is where you put how much your NFT costs. So we'll put the value as 0.2. Then our destination is the wallet where all the funds go. We'll use our owner wallet for it just because we don't want to create too many wallets. But in real life, you can put whatever wallet you want. So copying the owner wallet and pasting it right here. Then we'll add a start date to our mint. So start date, which will take date as an input and the date will be 2022. Let's say some month, some day, and then it needs a time which we can put as just let's say one and then the time zone which is UTC by placing this Z right there. Okay, next let's add our favorite card which is the bot tax and make this an object, give it a value. Let's say we want to charge 0 0.01 every time somebody tries to make an invalid transaction. And then there's another field called last transaction which basically means that if the minting was not successful as the last transaction, then charge them as the bot tax. The Metaplex talks recommend setting this to true, and that's what we'll follow here. Okay, so we have our guards added to the config file. Let's run the commands to actually make this part of the candy machine. And to do that, we'll run the command sugar cm3, then guard and add. So copying this and running it right here. Looks like I messed up the config file. It says it could not parse the field last instruction. Oh yeah. I have a spelling mistake here. So fixing this and now running this command again. Okay, so the command was successful and we can run another command to see what guards were added. So we can do sugar cm3 guard and then show. So let's run this command and it prints out all the guards that's attached to our candy machine. We can see if we have a bot tax of 0.01, our sole payment is 0.2 sole and the wallet where it goes and then our start date. And we also have a mint limit of one per wallet. Okay, so before we continue, let's talk about Candy Machine UI. I briefly mentioned this in the beginning of the video, but the official Candy Machine UI is not ready yet. So I dived into their Candy Machine V2 UI code to see how I can tweak it to make it work for Candy Machine V3. And I was able to make it work for very simple use cases. So it's very, very naive implementation. And I will highly recommend you to wait for the official support in case you want to use Candy Machine V3 for production and for your actual NFT collections. Okay, so let's set up the Candy Machine UI that I've derived. The download link is in the description. Okay, so now let's set up my Candy Machine UI. If you follow the link in the description, you'll be able to download this file CMV3 UI V0, which is just a fancy name for Candy Machine V3 UI, and I gave V0 as my own version. So let's extract this, which I'm doing using double click, and then this creates this folder in here. So in our terminal, let's go inside this folder, which is CD CMV3 UI V0. Let me copy this and paste it in our commands. And the first command we'll run here is cp dot env dot example and we'll copy it to dot env making a note of this command and running this and here let me expand the folder we have dot env and dot env dot example the next command that will run is npm install which can take some time so i'll just start the command right here okay our dependencies are now installed and now the next step we'll do is to open up this env file and we'll put our candy machine id right here so going to our notes and copying the candy machine ID and placing it right here. Then the other thing we need to put is the owner wallet that was associated to the candy machine. So we'll go to our notes again, copy the public key of our owner wallet and putting this right here. Now, the next command that will run is npm start. So copying this command and running it. Okay, so here's the candy machine UI that I've managed to make it work with Candy Machine V3. So if there are any bugs, please let me know in comments. And please remember, this is very, very experimental and it's not recommended to use in production. Okay, so now it's time to taste our sweet candy machine. Let's go and mint our NFTs. Let's try to connect our wallet and see if we can get this to work. So connecting the wallet, we'll choose Phantom and confirming the connect operation. And we can see we have 10 NFTs remaining and our price was 0.20 sol. So let's try to mint something. 
and approve this transaction. We can see that the remaining NFTs went down by one, which is now nine. And this is our NFT that we just minted. Let's look at our wallet to find this NFT in there. And this is our NFT. If we see number collection 003, let's try to mint again and see what happens. Remember, we are only allowed to mint once per wallet. And we can see it's charging us 0 0.01, which might be the bot tax. And most likely it just will fail. And clearly it says minting was unsuccessful and the number of items did not go down. Congrats on using Candy Machine V3 to launch your NFT collection. I hope this video was helpful and now you have a basic understanding of how Candy Machine V3 works and all the new offerings that it has. If you like this video and if this was helpful, then please don't forget to subscribe and like this video and to show me your support by following me on Twitter, buying me some coffee or even by following me on so many other platforms where I'm trying to grow some presence. Well, I'm working on more and more videos, so they will be coming out soon. Thank you so much for joining us.